All right, you wanna make a little bit of extra money, you wanna get your hand in passive income, but I'm here to tell you the truth behind passive income and I'm not gonna make you wait in this video to learn about it. Here it is. There is no such thing as 100% automated, hands-off, forever, passive income. Not unless you're talking about like you've acted in a movie or something and you're getting royalties for life, or maybe you're Mariah Carey and for whatever reason, every year we all sing and hear the same song and you get paid for that. The opportunities exist to make money. However, you must invest time up front to create the systems, to generate that income, to pay you back later. And it doesn't always work out. I've had too many people come to me going, hey, what's the easiest way to generate an income? That's the wrong question. I've had a lot of people go, hey, this YouTuber is saying it's so easy. Is that true? And I go, no, you can generate passive income. I'm gonna show you six different models that I've used to generate passive income. But at the same time, I wanna uncover exactly how much work was put into it, how much time and money was invested, and what you might do if you wanna get started on that path too. So here are the six business models that we're going to cover. Number one, I wanna start by talking about my very first business that I created. It was actually outside of the how to make money online space. It was to help people pass an architectural exam. So I'm gonna talk about how that got started, the business models that are used, and yes, it's actually still alive today and generating some money, which I'll share with you still month to month. Number two, we're gonna talk about affiliate marketing. If you were to ask me, Pat, okay, what would actually be the easiest way to make money online? I would say affiliate marketing, and I'm gonna show you some examples of how that's done, but also it requires work. It's not push button easy. You have to do the work, and I'll show you how. Number three, a lot of you have been very curious about my real estate portfolio. Quite honestly, it just started, and it's just one other house, a rental property. So I wanna talk a little bit about, and I've never shared this before, that property, how much it costs, the mortgage, all that stuff, and I know there's a lot more people, way more experienced than me about that, but it is something I'm experimenting with, and it's a lot of hard work. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Before, I've also never shared this before, my stock portfolio. For example, I woke up this morning and Tesla was over 500 points. How much did that make me? Well, I'll share with you what today was like, but also that's just one day out of the long-term investments that I've had and uh, every day is different. Number five, Amazon. I know a lot of you are thinking about either white labeling or wholesaling on Amazon or maybe even inventing something like me and my partner did. We have an Amazon business now that was launched in 2019. I'll share with you some of the numbers. Even today, how much money did we earn today and what work did we do to make that happen? And then the backstory of just, well, exactly what did it take to get there? And then finally, I wanna talk about podcasting. Not in the sense that I want you to podcast too, but if you are a content creator of any kind, podcasting is my primary platform. Whatever your primary, Whatever your primary platform is, I want you to understand how you might be able to use it to launch a business, to generate revenue, and how passive it actually is or is not. So stick with me, we got a lot of things to cover. In the meantime, if you'd like to leave a comment below and tell me what kind of business you're involved with or you're thinking of starting, leave that comment now. Or maybe you could wait to the end if you are just starting and you have no idea what you wanna do. So, looking forward to communicating with you here in the chat, but for right now, Let's just get right into it. All right, my very first business started in 2008. I actually got laid off from an architecture job, one that I loved, and I created an online business to help people in the architecture space pass an exam. And it wasn't the architectural exams. I hadn't even taken mine yet. It was an exam that I had just finished taking myself called the LEED exam, L-E-E-D, which stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. You've probably never heard about it before, and this is my first lesson. You don't have to create something that changes the entire world. You just need to create something that changes somebody's world. And my somebody at the time was somebody who was just like me not too long before that, which was somebody who was studying like crazy to pass this exam because it was just a hard, really hard exam. And they wanted nothing more than to complete that exam and pass it. So I set up a website. I got very involved with putting all my notes on there, getting involved in forums. And lo and behold, I started to be seen as the expert in that space, even though I barely passed the exam. It was simply because I was showing up that I got seen as somebody who could help those who were just starting out. And that's a big lesson too. You don't need to be the expert on a topic. You just need to be somebody who knows a little bit more than somebody else. And if that's the case, you can help people and as a byproduct, generate an income too. So here's what I did. I launched a study guide, literally a PDF file that I sold for $19.95 in October of 2008, when I launched that, I had made 
sense. And the cool thing is because it was just an ebook, I didn't like print them out and ship them and get returns and all that stuff. Number one, I didn't want to deal with any of that. But number two, I kept most of the money as profit. Now, a lot of people hear that story and they go, Pat, wow, that's wonderful. You just set up a website. Uh, how do I just set up a website and make money? Well, the thing is you, you can't. You have to do a lot of work to make it happen. And I did this and a lot of people don't hear about this in the story. I was spending 16 to 18 hours a day in forums related to this architectural exam, helping people with answering their questions, not even making mention of my website. It was there on those forums that I became an expert. And then eventually I added the link on my signature. People started to share my website with others. My website started to get known. Google found it eventually. And then I figured out how to put my words in a Word document, turn it into a PDF file, sell it online, and thankfully it did very well. The other thing that benefited me within this particular realm was that I was selling information about something that people desperately wanted to know about and were willing to pay for. If you're gonna be creating a product in the, I don't know, how to create your first scrapbook for under $30, um, it's going to be a tough go because number one, like how much of a pain is that for that person? I was targeting a huge pain and people in that career were willing to spend money to get rid of that pain. And once people started to see that my stuff was working for them, word started to spread and I saw offices, entire offices all buying my guide to help just the whole situation for, the, for their business. And it peaked in mid 2009 when I was making $30,000 a month on an ebook. I raised the price, of course, but a lot of lessons learned there. And that was my first online business and why I started what I'm doing now to help others because truly these opportunities exist, but I wanted to tell the truth. This stuff is not easy. You got to put in the work. All right, number two, let's talk about affiliate marketing, something that we can all do. And you've likely gone through the motions of it before. If you've ever recommended a product or a movie or a service to another friend or another person that you know, then guess what? You've done affiliate marketing. You just never got paid for those recommendations. Affiliate marketing is recommending products to other people that aren't your own products. So unlike me with my study guide in the previous example, you can make money by selling other people's stuff. A quick and easy way to do this is to sign up for Amazon Associates. And just to give you an idea, last year I generated about $23,000 in earnings as a result of recommending other products that again, were not mine. The cool thing is you can get started with this right away. The bad thing is too many people abuse this and what they end up doing is they find a product with a high commission and they just ow, 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 ram ow. it down their audience's throat and that never feels good. So I have some videos about affiliate marketing if you wanna go deeper into it. However, I do wanna show you a couple examples. This video here is a video where I reviewed a few microphones and every day people are clicking on the affiliate link in the description uh, and I'm getting paid for that. And it's just four to 8% on Amazon, but those things add up the most important thing is to find the right products for your audience. And if you can't sign up for Amazon, you can also be an affiliate for Walmart, for Target. Did you know that? You can be an affiliate for events that you might be going to. You can be an affiliate for coaching services, digital products, physical products, anything really. Because these companies want to thank you and reward you for sending customers their way. So affiliate marketing, it takes work. It takes a lot of effort to build trust with an audience. But once you have that trust, then you can make magic happen with affiliate marketing. Next up, we have our real estate property. Again, this is not my game. I'm just getting into it. I'm learning uh, about this a lot from many of the YouTubers who are here. And if you have any resources, put them in the comment section below so that I can learn from them too. But just to give you some numbers, this house, we paid for it. It was $580,000 this is in San Diego. So we got West Coast prices, of course. I put 156K down, which I had uh, just building up over time in a Wealthfront account. And we decided to take some out, invest it in this property, which has a little bit of sentimental value because it was a house that we actually, uh, my wife grew up in, which is pretty cool. So now we have a loan of $424,000 and a mortgage payment of about, uh, let's see, 2,863 four bedroom, single family dwelling. The question is, well, how much are we charging monthly for this? We're charging $2,900. So if I were to do the math, 2,900 minus 2,863.31, we're making a whopping $36.69 per month. Woo! Now, obviously this is not for the cash flow. The house has already increased in price due to appreciation uh, since we bought it a couple years ago. 
And a lot of this cash flow honestly goes to pay for a manager who takes care of the entire thing for us. And there's been some repairs that have been needed, so likely we're cash flow negative on this over time. However, just to know that it's in our family and uh, it's appreciating as long as the price goes up at the house. I mean, it could be that one thing one day where we sell it off and, you know, it's kind of just paying for itself. We have tenants in there who are likely going to be in there for a while. And if not, this manager is going to take care of it for us. We're just dipping our toes in this. And if you get involved with any of these things, I recommend you do the same thing. You just kind of dip your toes and you learn from people and you kind of figure things out and you start small so you can make mistakes and everything will be okay. I know that a lot of people might be going, oh my gosh, you're trying real estate for the first time in San Diego. But like I said, this house has sentimental value. We have tenants in there. It's kind of automated already. And I'm happy to pay 50 bucks a month and lose that to have this house in our family and to appreciate over time. So I think it's a win. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Maybe one day I'll invest in, you know, multifamily housing or, you know, business, retail, that sort of stuff. But for right now, we're having fun with just experimentation. All right, next up, the stock market. I've been investing a little bit every month ever since I was the age of 21. And by a little bit, I mean even $5 a month, what I could afford back in the day when I was in architecture and I couldn't afford anything, to now sometimes investing one, two, three thousand dollars $3,000 a month into the stock market. But right now, here's sort of what my portfolio looks like. Had a really good day today, as you can see. Tesla was up, which is the majority of my portfolio. It was up about nine, 10% today, which means today, just from them alone, I've been able to advance my account by about $2,000. I've also done very well with AMD and Plug recently, and I'm not gonna go into the specifics. I just really wanna support, and I invest in companies that I know a little bit about, that I have experience with. Uh, I am a former Tesla owner. I'm waiting for my Y to come in. I, I uh, got rid of my X um, and my Tesla X too. And for most of these, it's more of a long-term play. I'm not playing the shorts or anything like that, but I do pay attention. You know, this is years and years of small little investments over time adding up and we've done really well. I've had a total gain of about $21,500. So my portfolio is looking good. It's increased my principal by 42, almost 43%, which is really amazing. And again, just supporting companies that I really believe in, that I do follow the news about, and I'm just stoked to uh, be in it because it's, you know, honestly a lot of fun. But again, it's one of those things that you could start small with like I did back when I was 21. And over time, just continually investing in companies and dollar cost averaging and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's fun. But um, if I were to recommend making money anywhere, it wouldn't be starting with stocks. That's for sure. I'd recommend building a business of your own. And honestly, I've made way more money building my own business and considering them assets as well versus the stock market or real estate or anything like that. Next up, I wanna talk about my Amazon business with my partner, Caleb, he and I, he's my videographer. We started a physical product company. We invented something together. This is it right here. This is called the Switch Pod. As you can see in my shirt, it's a little tripod. You can stick your camera on it and when you're ready to go to tripod mode, let me do that one more time because I just love that. So a lot of people see that we launched this on Kickstarter in February, March of 2019, and we earned $418,000 from nearly 5,000 backers. That's very successful. We've even almost sold out of all the inventory that we've had in addition to what we sold to the backers and it's selling on Amazon. As you can see here today, we are generating you know thousands of dollars a day from this thing. But let me tell you two things about this. Number one, out of all the business models that I've talked about, especially online, this, more than anything, cuts through the profit margins with manufacturing, with the, the legal and the patenting and, and just Amazon fees. And there's just so much involved to make this thing happen. And this is metal, by the way, so it's not cheap to make either. Um, there's just so much involved. And so our profits are eaten up a little bit. Plus, we had the tariffs that we had to deal with last year and this year, too. There's just a lot of things going on. Now, if you don't invent your own thing, you're still gonna have to deal with a lot of those things if you source from China, which most people do. But a lot of brands are doing really well selling things on Amazon. So we wanted to try it out and it's not just on Amazon, it's on our Shopify account, it's on other retail stores too, potentially looking at trying to get into big box retails as well. Um, it's just a completely different kind of business model. Now, a lot of people see, Pat, wow, you guys invented something and now it's a success. We have yet to really start generating any personal income from this. Number one, we're just putting money back into the business. And number two, from the moment we had the idea, it's taken about two years to get our first dollar. 
We spent about twenty-four to thirty thousand um, dollars for prototypes, for travel, for research, and all that stuff. And there was no guarantee that this thing would sell. That's why we chose Kickstarter to really prove and actually have people vote with their dollars that this thing would work. And when it did, it was great. But even then, it's taken a lot of time, a lot of investment, over two years in the making. So this is not something that happened overnight. Quite the opposite, actually. But. It's turning into a really interesting and fun business model, and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you about it over time. All right, and finally, let's talk about the most potentially lucrative, most potentially fulfilling, and most exciting, but hardest long-term business model there is out there. For me, in my opinion, that is building a platform-based business. That is your podcast, your blog, your YouTube channel, your social channels, or a combination of using all of those things, plus an email list for you to build trust, to build a reputation, to build relationships with other people in the same space as you, to solve people's problems, to build a business that allows you to entertain and inform and educate people all at the same time so that you can have a ton of options. For example, coaching, or creating digital products, creating events, things that I've all had a hand in for example, this past year, I ran an event called FlynnCon where I got up on stage, 500 entrepreneurs came to town in San Diego. We had a blast for two and a half days. And that's just one of the many types of business models that a platform-based business can take advantage of. I've spent 12 years building my authority online. 12 years. I've only recently started getting serious here on YouTube. My podcast has just passed 65 million downloads. A platform allows you to have a voice. A voice allows you to build trust. And that tribe then will listen to you, to your recommendations. They will take your online courses. They will buy your products that you come out with. But it takes a long time to get there. Some people go kind of 50% the way there and then they get distracted by this thing and that thing and squirrel syndrome takes place. But it's those who dedicate time to nurturing an audience to potentially build Superfans. Superfans is now available on Amazon and anywhere good books are sold. But here's the other truth about this. I have a team of seven people now. I never thought getting into business that I would have a team and become the CEO of a company with responsibilities. And if you had asked my earlier younger self if that's what you wanted, my answer would have been no. But you know what's been the best part of this whole thing? The best part of this whole thing is being able to take this success and turn it into something that has an effect on people around the world who probably don't even know I exist. We've built schools around the world in places like Ghana, Africa. I even went to Africa in 2015 to see some of the schools that we built and meet the teachers and the students whose lives we've changed. Thanks to Team Flynn, that's many of you, and some campaigns we've run in conjunction with Pencils of Promise. Sure, you could have success in real estate by having rows and rows of houses, by having duplexes and triplexes and quadplexes, and I don't even know what exists right now. And sure, you could own a stock portfolio that could pay you back a hundred thousand times. But what does that all matter? What matters is your happiness and helping and impacting the lives of others. We didn't even talk about advertising and sponsorships and all these other companies when you build a big audience and a brand and trust with people, how much money they'll throw at you to get in front of them. You need to take responsibility. If you build that big brand, you need to take responsibility because with great power, comes great responsibility. And it might potentially take years to earn the trust of people on the internet, but it can just take a moment to lose it all. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it gives you a little bit of insight on some of the things I'm working on. I haven't even gone over everything yet, uh, but I plan to do so. So make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. And just wanna thank you again for being part of Team Flynn. And if you're a brand new member and you just hit subscribe today, uh, it's great to meet you. I'm looking forward to chatting with you in the comments and in future videos. Uh, until then, my name is Pat Flynn, here to help you make more money, save more time, and help more people too. Thank you so much. And as always, Team Flynn for the win.